And now we've got the recording. Okay, let's go back again to the screen. Okay, so we're uh, going to go through the through the um, message about how do how do we know God? How do knowing God? Uh, beginning with these two, beginning with these two uh, verses, Jesus said to those who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then uh, later in John chapter 10, when he was talking about him being the good shepherd, he said to, the, to him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee for him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. So as we look at this, we know, we understand that to know God uh, really is more than just knowing about God. We're not talking about just knowing about God. That is, there's such important distinction between knowing God and being uh, and uh, knowing about God and knowing God that is in that uh, in order to to know God we have to be in a relationship with Him an intimate relationship with Him. So to know is a is a, a re relational term uh, in the Scripture to know, uh, and so it's speaking of our relationship with. The Lord, how, and how do we develop that? Of course, we come to know God first. The first step is by acknowledging Jesus as God's Son and our Savior. Uh, without acknowledging Jesus, without taking that first step uh, towards towards Jesus, uh, we we can't develop that relationship because we have our relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and apart from Him, there can be no relationship. So, and then then once we acknowledge Jesus as Lord of our life, once we acknowledge him and receive him into our heart, then we begin to develop a continuing fellowship with him as we live a life of, of, of obedience and love. So it's not, many people believe that all you have to do is just say this simple prayer, uh, asking Jesus to forgive your sins and acknowledge him as Lord, and that's all there is to it. You take that that first step and then that's it. Uh, and from there on out, you attend church. You know, you you um, uh, tend to tend your 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 uh, Bible study, or you you uh, you know give your tithes and offerings to the church, or you serve in the church. And 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 that uh, is from develops from that initial acknowledgement as of Jesus as the Son of God. And what what they fail to recognize is that. We have to develop a continuing fellowship with him, uh, and we have to continue to build on that relationship. That we that the, the that it is more than just just acknowledging Jesus as a savior. So that's kind of like what it is about knowing about Jesus, or you know, or even believing that he is God's son, and, and that the, in and of itself does not uh, guarantee our salvation. Uh, the acknowledgement is the beginning, it's the crossing over, but we must also uh, have that desire to follow him and to obey him. That is the, being a disciple uh, of Jesus. So there's a huge step that has to be taken and something that, that goes beyond that, that first step that we take with Jesus. So, you know, uh, again, just as example, I mean, the evil spirits, uh, they knew that Jesus was the son of God. Uh, but uh, you know they would the the, the these de demons they would never turn from their uh, wicked wickedness and from their evil plans and purposes and uh, and submit them, themselves to to Jesus as Lord. Uh, so um, as as the scriptures say, you know you 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 believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. And in another place, uh, Jesus uh, 
was again uh, confronting someone who was demon possessed, and the demon comes out and says, "What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? Mm -hmm. I know you, who you are, the Holy One of God." So obviously, from these passages of scriptures, we can we can see that that it's not it's much more than just knowing who Jesus is that that develops that that uh, knowing Jesus. You know, the crowds that we read about in the Gospels that were following Jesus, many of them were following him for the wrong reason. They, they were looking for a political or a military leader who would free them from Roman rule. And, uh, of course, they thought that Jesus was the Messiah that was predicted by the Old Testament. And so they expected him to be this, uh, this warrior king like King David uh, and lead an army. Uh, uh, to overthrow the foreign foreign rule over, uh, and the Gentiles' rule over uh, the Jews, but uh, Christ, cre of course, Christ's kingdom is is a spiritual kingdom, and so they often miss the point of all of that. And 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 it's true for uh, many people even today. They follow Jesus for the wrong reason, or they're looking for something uh, in, in Jesus that that isn't there and and that happens when they when they don't know him if you don't know who jesus is you don't know uh you know who he truly is in that relationship with him uh that's that's when when you can go astray so quickly so as i said you know understanding that christ's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom uh in the, is the beginning of all of that the first thing uh, that we understand is that Jesus did not come to overthrow governments, but he came to overthrow sin in in the people's hearts. That's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus spoke to Nicodemus. Of course, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He knew the scriptures. He knew forward and backwards uh, what the scriptures about. He even recognized that Jesus must be a special, unique individual, because he said, no one can do the works that you do unless they came from God. So he was, he wanted to question Jesus, and Jesus turned the tables on him immediately and, and, and said, said to Nicodemus, you uh, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. So uh, one of the big problems that, that Jesus uh, uh, faced in during his earthly ministry is that people knew a lot about, they knew, the, they, they knew about the scriptures. They knew what the scriptures had said about the Messiah. Uh, and there are many people today having a lot of knowledge, uh, and they have a lot of wisdom. They have degrees as long as your arm, and they they uh, have they 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 think they have so much knowledge of that, and and they may have a lot of knowledge about these things, about Bible history and and all these other things. It, but it, it you know it's 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 not the knowledge of the Bible is not the same as obedience to his message. And, and of course, that was the issue that Jesus was facing with Nicodemus, who was a teacher of the scriptures. And he knew the Old Testament thoroughly. And, and like so many of the teachers of the law at that time, he would have memorized large, long passages of scriptures. I mean, these Pharisees could go, you know, run circles around most of us today, as far as their knowledge of the scriptures are concerned. Uh, but they didn't know the Messiah. Uh, their, their, their knowledge of who Jesus was in this intimate relationship, they didn't know. Uh, so, uh, you know, we should know the Bible, but more importantly, or, you know, of equal importance, at least, is knowing the God to whom the, that the Bible reveals and the salvation that God uh, uh, offers. And so this is, you know, where we realize that the knowledge, Bible knowledge is a means to an end. It's not the end in, a, in and of itself. And uh, Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24 is a, is, is a warning to, to all of us who, who, uh, who are Bible scholars or consider ourselves knowledgeable of the scriptures 
uh, where in Jeremiah it says, this is what the Lord says, let not the wise man gloat in his wisdom or the mighty man in his might or the rich man in his riches. Let them boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who is just and righteous, whose love is unfailing, that I delight in these things I, the Lord, have spoken. So Jeremiah is basically saying the, the same thing, that knowing about God is not the same thing as knowing him personally. And I'm sure that just about everyone I'm speaking to uh, knows that truth also. Uh, so the question is, you know, how how then do we do we uh, learn to know God personally? And and we do, we do that uh, through prayer, uh, through reading through reading the Bible, and uh, the Gospels really tell us who Jesus is. And as we worship Jesus in spirit and truth, then the purpose of that it's a it's a means to the end, and the end is be becoming like him uh, as we worship him as we. Uh, read his word and study the scriptures and and knowing about him is the means to knowing him personally uh so it it is very helpful and very important that that we as if we examine the gospels it's not just about a matter of trying to gain information but what we're trying to do is we're trying to 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 know who Jesus is uh better so that we can become like him. Uh, so we can't become like Jesus if we don't know what he was like. Uh, that's pretty pretty uh, uh, obvious. Like, like Jesus himself said in Matthew 10, 24 and 25, he said, you know, it's, it's, uh, the, 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 it's enough that the disciple become like the master. That's the whole point of being a disciple is becoming like Jesus. So let's very quickly and briefly, we will look over uh, look over uh, what these attributes of Jesus are. What was he like? Who is he? And who are we wanting to be in relationship with and becoming more like him in the end? And so the, uh, the Gospels tell us uh, uh, about Jesus. And as we worship Jesus in spirit and truth, then we become like him. They, they work those two things work together in, in understanding who he is and knowing about him and pressing in and worshiping him uh, in spirit and truth. So we become more like him. So, of course, uh, we look at these things that Jesus, he was, he, of course, we know he was humble and humility uh, in the, in, as uh, Jesus would be is not the same as the world would tell us, you know, the humility it's almost like a false humility. It's you know, taking a low view of one's importance or uh, or looking at one's poor living standards and uh, and, 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 and calling that humility. Uh, but humility is more than that. It's uh, humility is the ability to love and are, accept ourselves the way we are without pretensions. In other words, to be able to see ourselves as God sees us. And, and so uh, we understand our strengths and weaknesses, just as Jesus really understood his strengths and weaknesses in his, in his humanity. Uh, he was fully submitted to doing his father's will. He said time and time again, I've not come to do my own will, but to do only what the father, what the father tells me to do. So what the father spoke to Jesus is what he spoke. He was submitted to his father. And, and that is uh, the, a true humility. And, and we learn, as we learn to be submitted to the Lord and submitted to his word and to submitted to his way and his will, uh, we become humbled the way Jesus was humbled. And of course, Jesus, he had the uh, ability to learn. You know, Jesus we remember that Jesus didn't just suddenly appear on the scene, fully grown and fully formed in a in a and with all this knowledge and under and, and wisdom. Uh, Jesus had to learn uh, everything, just as we had learned. His his mother had taught would teach him 
and teach him how to pray and and all of these th all of these things he would have to learn how to read and write he'd have to learn how to walk on his own two feet all these things and he had to go to school he had to learn uh so uh so jesus could understand uh how you know, we have to learn and and jesus was able to take this and transfer that in his disciples so uh, jesus taught his disciples uh, to to how to be open to receiving and learning and he and he was constantly teaching them new things as he was taught new things so when we are when we are like him as we as as we uh, have this relationship with him we we learn that we learn more about him and we learn that we have to be uh open to learning that we don't know it all we don't have all the answers and jesus is constantly teaching us as we move closer and more intimate relationship with him he is teaching us the other thing is integrity jesus was a person of complete integrity he was a transparent human being uh and jesus was the same person in public as he was in private he was not something different he wasn't uh he wasn't one way to when he was out in public and another way when he was in private uh, I think I, I heard it said somewhere that integrity is what you do when no one is watching. And I think that's really uh, a, a very clear. I mean, but so we learn to have the same kind of integrity that Jesus had, to be genuine, to be transparent, first before God and then others, uh, which can be difficult because, of course, because you know uh, uh, other people don't always uh, don't always um, um, handle that the right way. You know they they will use our transparency as a sign of weakness in this world. But still, we are required to be open and transparent with others, uh, just as Jesus was. And Jesus helps us in that uh, to live that life of of integrity. Uh, uh, and so. <clears throat> Jesus was also uh, took responsibility for what he had come to do. You know, Jesus had a mission. He came to do the Father's will, and he had that responsibility upon his shoulders to not only to glorify the Father, but he had to go and finish what he had started uh, to the end, and that which led to the cross. And Jesus would not. Uh, quit when things got tough, when things got difficult, when his disciple, when the, many of the disciples had deserted him, and when he, he faced all kinds of, of opposition from the Pharisees, and people didn't understand him, and they didn't understand what, what he was about, and people often came to him for the wrong reasons, and they were always wanting something from him, and it was just like this constant grasping at him. But Jesus never allowed those things to take him away from what he what, what what he had committed himself to do. He persevered into the end, and uh, he showed people uh, that we can rely upon him into the end. You know, where there's no uh, greater moment than Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, wrestling with his with with what what he had been called to do and to finish that race. But uh, he would not. He would not um, run from that from his responsibility to for that salvation to come, and so we recognize that in him. And as we draw closer to him, he he places that in us as well. And we learn to persevere through all the trials and difficulties of this life. Uh, Jesus also was resilient. Uh, Resilience is is um, is a quality uh, in which uh, a person a person is able to uh, change and move and and adapt to whatever he uh, whatever situation they might be fa facing. We have to remember that from the moment of his baptism, Jesus pursued uh, this goal. He had a mission to fulfill to to preach the good news to the poor, to make disciples and to glorify the Father. 
and and he uh, revealed the present reality of the kingdom of God, even when he was facing great opposition, when people didn't understand what he was teaching him. He, he was able to adapt and he could bend when necessary to fulfill his purpose. There were times when he would take his disciples away from Jerusalem and say, we're not going to go down to Judea or Jerusalem um, you know, because he knew that he was that the confrontation, that the final confrontation was not the timing. It was not the right situation. So Jesus could could adapt to whatever situation he was taking place. He was not rigid and fixed. There's only one way of doing things, and we're going to do it this way, and that's it. But he was he was able to to uh, move and change and and assess whatever situation he was in uh, without being rigid and fixed that, you know, it's my way or no way. Uh, so, and, and as we get, draw closer to him, we get that same quality. We realize that in order to, to fulfill our, our destiny with the Lord, that we have to be able to do the same thing. Uh, we have to be resilient the, uh, in the same way. So, um, Okay, I, I hope everybody can see the, the PowerPoint here. I got a note from someone that they can't see the PowerPoint. No one can see the PowerPoint? Hang on. Hang on. No, sir, we are not able to see the PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, for the whole thing, you haven't been able to see the PowerPoint? Hang on. Let me figure out what's going on here then. What is going on? Okay, the share screen thing went off. Try it again at some point. Okay, sorry about that. Now we've got the uh, PowerPoint on. Okay, can you see it now? Yes, I can okay. see it. Okay, I apologize for that. Uh, I'm not going to start this over. You know, you'll just uh, we'll just kind of miss those uh, first uh, slides. I'm sorry, um, but um, okay, we see then that another in an, another another um, attribute of Jesus that we see when in the Gospels is that how Jesus had compassion. For, for others. Uh, so, of course, Jesus was a compassionate leader. As the son of man, he, he knew how to put himself in other people's shoes, to have to listen, to understand, uh, to comprehend their problems, their, their issues, their needs uh, uh, when they came to him. And he showed compassion for others. As we draw close to him and become more and more like him, then our compassion for others grows uh, because uh, of, of who he is and what the work that he's doing in our hearts and in our lives. So also, uh, uh, the, as we continue in, in here, as we look at Jesus and who he was and what he was like, uh, Jesus, of course, had respect for others. It didn't matter who came to him whether it was uh, the little children that came to him, the, the uh, rich, the poor, uh, the, the powerful, the weak. Uh, Jesus treated everyone with equal respect. He treated the beggar, the shepherd, the children, the aristocrats, the religious. Uh, he treated them all with equal dignity and respect. And he saw the intrinsic value in every human being. Uh, so Jesus, Jesus, uh, as we draw close to Him, He He changes our, our uh, way that we relate to others, and we learn to respect others uh, for who they are. Uh, Jesus, of course, uh, had the vision for the kingdom, and human beings, of course, they tend to narrow their vision down to 
what's in front of them, you know, the daily affairs, the regular stuff, the daily chores we have to do, the work-a-day world going through and, and doing what we have to do uh, from day to day. And this is how life passes for, for many people. They get caught up in the little details of life. But Jesus never saw, lost sight of the big picture of the kingdom of God. He, he was a visionary in that sense, in that, that he saw the long-term end. And he inspired his disciples to look up and to refresh their perspective on the kingdom of God. And so uh, as we draw near to him, as we uh, have that intimate knowledge of him, we share his vision and we raise and lift our eyes above the mundane things of this world. And like Jesus, we have our, our, we have ourselves set or fixed upon the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and that becomes the motivating vision of our lives. And of course, Jesus was able to inspire others and to make other people follow him and fight their own battles of faith. We take courage from him. We take his example and we will, will fight to become overcomers. You, you look like you read in revelation and in the in chapters two and three of revelation, where Jesus is addressing the seven churches there and time and time again, he talks about those who overcome uh, those who overcome. These things are waiting for them. These rewards are for those who pursue until the end. And so Jesus was an inspirational person for us. And as we draw near to him again, as we get to know him in an intimate way, he, through through our knowledge of who he is, it inspires us to persevere and to overcome the things of life as, as he did. So Jesus was able to uh, renew himself. And uh, of course, by renewing himself, we're talking there about the resurrection, that Jesus did not let the circumstances of his death and his burial to determine the final outcome of his life. Uh, as he was, uh, as it was the Father's intention from the beginning uh, that Jesus would rise from the dead. And, and of course, Jesus lives again uh, in heaven. And because of him, uh, we have hope for that resurrection and that resurrected life. And and as we renew our life in him day by day, we're constantly being renewed by the spirit within him, within us. It's like the scriptures say that, you know, we're like the jars of clay or outwardly we might be wasting away, but inwardly we are being renewed day by day uh, by the presence of God in us by his spirit in us so jesus puts a high priority on knowing him personally and living a life that reflects his greater character and righteousness uh so we and again it's so important to understand that we cannot know him personally apart from knowing his word as jesus has said uh to those again if you believe in my word you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And uh, uh, in another place, Jesus is say, said, what the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And so as we begin, so we end with these scriptures looking at, at uh what this relationship is that dynamic of knowing him so we we more than just know about him but we know him in a, in a personal and in, intimate way and as we get to know him in a personal and intimate way we follow in his footsteps and so we worship god uh and and we we know him uh personally uh as we read in, in the scriptures and as we meditate upon the word of God, it, it has that inward work of transforming us into his likeness. And uh, so our goal, the purpose for which we have been saved, is that we might know him in such a way that we become like him, that we become transformed uh, by, by his 
uh, spirit within us and working in us and through us in the knowledge of who he is. Amen. Oh, one last thing. Sorry. This last one. So, and we who with unveiled faces all contemplate and reflect on the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. That is second Corinthians. And so there, there, that is the, that is the whole purpose and goal for which we have been saved. Now, amen. Stop share. Okay.